They are still counting votes from the Democratic Republic of Congo's December 20th presidential and parliamentary elections. Incumbent Felix Chisekedi, who is seeking re-election, is being challenged by about 24 other candidates. Wednesday's vote was marred by several alleged irregularities, prompting some opposition candidates to say that the results may not reflect the will of the people. Joining us from the DRC capital, Kinshasa, is Abdul Shakur Abu of VOA Swahili Service. It's an interesting vote counting system here in a country which is as big as Europe. Some of the polling stations have finished counting their votes. Some are continuing and uh, those who just finished, they've started voting. So there's like three processes going on. Those who are finished, those who are continuing and those who are going to start counting now. So that's how where we are right now. It's going to be very difficult to know how it's going because vote counting is taking place at every polling stations, and there are about 70,000 plus voting stations. Any idea at all when they hope to finish the counting? As you said, again, thousands of uh, polling stations. Well, because half, I think, or a third, probably, we don't have the right count, have already counted and have been transmitted electronically to CENI, the Electoral Commission. They have to tabulate them together, and they had promised they're going to start giving results of polling station and polling station from tomorrow. So from tomorrow, we will know exactly what's happening. Already, the opposition is saying that the vote is not going to reflect the will of the people. What are you hearing where you are? Yes, uh, there are five presidential candidates led by Martin Fayulu, who was beaten by Chisekedi in 2018, plus Dr. Mukwege, who had removed himself, but he's among the five, and Theodore Ngoi, with two other candidates who have come out with a statement yesterday evening saying that the elections were unfair, as you said does not represent the will of the people because there are a lot of irregularities. Voting sessions were open late and discouraged a lot of people not to vote. They went home. A lot of machines had malfunctioning. The delay in opening some of the stations has made a number of people disenfranchised because a lot of them went back and some never came back although the stations were open until late in the night. Some voting stations were opened until 1 in the morning. So there were voting going on, but they're saying that it's not fair. And another thing is that while new voting took place in areas where they did not even have the materials, the opposition is saying the CENI has no legal right to extend voting time. So it's unconstitutional according to them. Shako, thank you so much. A pleasure to speak with you. Thank you very much. That was Abdul Shakur Abu of VOA Swahili Service on assignment in the Democratic Republic of Congo's capital, Kinshasa. The United States on Thursday renewed a call for transparency in elections in the Democratic Republic of Congo after voting was extended to a second day following logistical problems. A State Department spokesperson said the United States reiterates our call for free and fair elections conducted with transparent and inclusive electoral processes. According to the French news agency, the AFP, the United States has previously called for transparency from the Election Commission to build confidence in the process. After the last presidential vote in December 2018, the Election Commission delayed the planned release of preliminary results and then declared Felix Tshisekedi to be the winner, leading runner-up Martin Fayulu to claim rigging. The United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, has issued a grave warning regarding the intensifying conflict in Sudan's Al Jazeera state, compelling over 150,000 children to flee with, within a week. The eight-month-long conflict between the Sudan Armed Forces, the SAF, and the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, the RSF, is engulfing more than half of Sudan's states. UNICEF representative in Sudan, Madib O'Brien, Discuss the urgent risks confronting children and families in a conversation with views Nabil Biagio from Port Sudan. Since the war broke out uh, from 15th of April, as you mentioned, more than half of the states in Sudan, that is nine out of 18 states, have been experiencing active war. And since last Friday, the escalation of violence has started in Al Jazeera state, which now makes it more than half of the states in Sudan 
experiencing active conflict. It's been more than eight months of brutal war in Sudan, which has been having a devastating impact on children. Sudan is a very young country, 50% are children, uh, and the future of 24 million children in this country is at stake. As we speak, Sudan also records the world's largest child displacement crisis because more than 3 million children have been forced to flee their homes. It is within this wider context, secondly, we need to see what is happening in Al Jazeera state now. Jazeera state has a population of 6 million people and half of them are children, that is 3 million children. And since the war broke out on 15th of April this year, Jazeera state, which is the bread basket of Sudan, has been a safe haven for many displaced children and families. So it has been housing almost close to half a million displaced kids. Madib O'Brien is the UNICEF representative in Sudan. She spoke with viewers Nabil Biagio from Port Sudan. The Somali National Army, backed by local forces on Wednesday, recaptured Masagaway town in the Galgdug region of central Somalia's Galmudug state from Al Shabaab militants after an operation. Abdulrahman Yusuf Al Adara, the Deputy Minister of Information, Culture and Tourism of the Federal Government of Somalia, said the troops managed to rebalate the strategic town from Al Shabaab following a successive military onslaught. The Al Shabaab terrorists have been removed from Masagaway town and operations to pursue them are going on from several fronts in eastern parts of the Galgdug region at the moment. Adala said. There were no reports of casualties from both sides during the military onslaught against the Al Qaeda linked terrorist group that had been controlling Masagaway town in the last four months after government forces left. Meanwhile, Somali troops have taken over round the clock security at Villa Somalia, the presidential palace from the African Union transition mission in Somalia. Artemis. For months, Sudanese army kept silent amid alleged emilati interference in the country's civil war, but its anger has finally boiled over, leading to harsh exchanges between Khartoum and Abu Dhabi. The brutal conflict broke out in mid-April between the army and parliamentary rapid support forces, killing more than 12,000 people and displacing millions. In November, General Yasser al atta second in command to Army Chief Abdel Fatal al burhan openly denounced the United Arab Emirates, calling it a state mafia that had taken the path of evil by supporting the RSF and its leader Mohammed Hamdan Dagaru. Atta accused the Abu Dhabi of funneling weapons through Chad, Uganda and Central African Republic to the RSF with the help of the Wagner Group, the Russian mercenaries who once enjoyed a foothold in Bangui. With the weakening of Wagner, their planes have also passed through Chad, landing for a week at Djamena Airport. Atta added also accusing Eastern Libya strongman Khalifa Haftal of being a conduit for parliamentary supplies. UAE officials did not respond to the AFP's request for comment. Sports have warned of the existence of such a supply line since the start of the war, but until November, Sudanese army had not made the accusation publicly. Until recently, the Bulhan camp exercised caution and diplomacy, avoiding direct verbal confrontations against key players such as Libya's Haftal, Russia and Abu Dhabi. Jalel Haltrud, associate fellow at the Royal United Services Institute.